and welcome back to Gigi's Kitchen and if you are new here then hello and welcome. My name is Alexis and during the month of December to help you with the festive season I'm going to be posting four times a week on a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday at 7am. So if you love recipe videos like this one and you want to see more then please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and now I'm going to share with you how to make my delicious crab bisque. As I just mentioned today I want to share with you how to make my delicious crab bisque soup. Now this recipe is really easy to do and you may have heard of this soup before as lobster bisque. Um, lobster in the UK, if you don't live near the sea, is quite hard to find in a supermarket. But you can buy crab in tins in our local supermarket and I'm sure others will sell it as well. It's a really great meat, it's really versatile. It's a bit like chicken to be honest. You can sort of put it in anything. Um, and it works really well in this soup. And I thought that this would make a really nice starter, maybe on Christmas day or over the festive season. It also makes a really nice tea as well like a dinner a light dinner we're actually going to be having it for our dinner this evening and while I was making it I thought I'd share the recipe with you so here is how to make my crab bisque soup so the first thing I've done is I've put a large pan and I'm going to put this onto a high heat on my hob then I'm just going to add a little bit of oil to the base of that pan like so and I'm going to spread the oil around the base of the pan and I'm going to leave this pan to heat up now. So my pan is nice and hot now and what I have done is I have a sli I peeled, sliced and diced one whole onion and I'm just going to put the onion into the base of the pan like so. And I'm just going to fry this for a few minutes until it starts to soften. So the onions have started to soften and my pan has got a little too hot so I'm just going to turn that down and now I'm going to add in some fennel. So I have a sliced and diced one large fennel and I'm just going to put this into my saucepan. Fennel is a really, tastes quite like aniseed, if you've ever tried aniseed, that's what fennel tastes like. I really like it. It is a bit of an acquired taste, but I do think it's a lovely vegetable. Um, we don't eat it enough, I don't think. This is probably the first time I've showed myself cooking on my channel with fennel, actually. So yeah, fennel's really nice in soups, but it's also really nice in um, salads as well. Um, it's not really a winter vegetable, I wouldn't say. It's probably more of a summer one. But as I said, it works really well in this soup. So, yeah. I'm just going to continue to fry the fennel now until it starts to soften. And this will probably take a good five minutes before it actually starts to soften. So, the fennel has started to soften now. I've been stirring it round for a good five minutes or so. And it has started to soften. Just, I'd say. If you wanted it a bit more, uh, so if you wanted it softer, then just keep stirring it for a few more minutes. But that's fine for me. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to add in um, the juice and zest of one whole orange. Now normally this sort of recipe calls for brandy, but as I'm serving this to a child, I didn't really want to put brandy in it. So orange juice is sort of my brandy equivalent. So it's just to give it a bit of an acidic flavour and a sweet flavour as well. And then I'm also going to add in two tablespoons of tomato puree as well. So one, two. And I'm just going to stir that round now. like so and obviously the tomato puree is to thicken the soup slightly and to give it a sort of sweet flavour as well so everything has started to soften beautifully now 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit of salt and pepper to this. Salt and pepper to your taste. So however much salt and pepper you need, you add. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of pepper as well. And once I've added those, I've got about 800 mils of chicken stock that I'm going to add to this. If you wanted to add fish stock, then you could. Um, and if you wanted to add a vegetable stock as well, then you could. Um, I just had a bit of chicken stock in the freezer. So it's perfect for this meal. So as I said, I'm going to add about 800 mils now, like that. And I'm going to bring this to the boil and then I'm going to leave it to simmer for a good 10 to 15 minutes, I'd say, just to continue softening the vegetables. And I'm also going to add in about 200 ml of oat milk to this recipe too. You can use any kind of milk you like. Um, I have a slight gluten intolerance, or gluten intolerance, dairy intolerance, so that's why I'm using oat milk. Um, but you could use ordinary milk or you could use a milk of your choice as well. So I turn the heat back up and the soup has started to come to the boil now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the heat down and I'm going to leave this to simmer for a good 15 to 20 minutes I'd say. The ingredients for the soup have been simmering away on the hob for about 20 minutes now. I've just turned off the heat and it smells really nice. I took the lid off. I put the lid on while it was simmering away and I just took the lid off and it all came up and it smelled really nice. My husband actually just came down from upstairs and he said oh that smells nice what are you cooking and I told him he was like oh I can't wait for that for dinner so yes we're looking forward to our dinner this evening now so I've turned off the heat as I've said and I'm just going to remove this from the hob and I'm going to leave it to cool I left the soup to cool it's not completely cool but it's cool enough to pour in the blender now so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour my ingredients into my blender like so and I think it'll all go in yes it will you may if you've used a bit more liquid than I have you may need to um, uh, basically do it into two parts so if you were doing it in two parts I would just do, do one bit and then pour the rest into a jug and then do the next bit but this actually fits in quite nicely. So I'm just gonna blend these ingredients together now. I blended those until they are smooth, like so. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put that back on and I'm going to add in my crab to this as well. So I'm gonna add in both tins you could use a little bit of um, crab at the end if you wanted to, just to garnish it maybe. Um, I did try the first time, but the crab all sort of sunk to the bottom, but it was nice to have those bits of crab in the soup. But this time I think I'm just going to blend it um, all together, like so. Grab this soup done. It's all lovely and smooth and it smells of the sea but a really nice smell of the sea. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to try a little bit. So I'm just going to pour some into a bowl. Oh, oh that little taste was lovely. Mm. It's still warm so oh that's delicious. That's really nice. You can certainly taste the crab, but you can taste the orange and the fennel as well. And the combination is just delicious. So yes, looking forward to this for my dinner this evening. That's how you make my yummy crab bisque soup. And that recipe, I will link in the description box below for you. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be having this for my dinner this evening. And it smells so good, I can't wait. I'm going to be serving this with some 
chickpea flour wraps and the recipe for those I will link in the description box below for you and my husband and son will be having this with cheesy toast both ways are really delicious and it is also a really nice soup to have on its own as well so for now that's it from me thank you so much for watching please feel free to give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and please feel free to leave any comments below and please don't forget to hit that subscribe button see you all soon bye